Welcome to Basic Online Searches for Genealogy. In this segment, I will be talking about searches using the Google Search Engine. These are also called string searches. There are three basic types of online searches. The first of these is a string search or Google search. This is the one primarily used by the Google search engines. I will be talking about this particular method of searching in this video. The next type of search is what I call a catalog search. Online catalogs are not usually searched by the Google search engine. To find a record for a document in a catalog requires a different set of search skills than those used to do basic string searches or Google searches. The last of the three basic types of online searches is the wiki search. Wikis are fairly, com fairly common online and their content is searched differently than either using a Google search or a search made in a catalog. In the context of computer jargon, the word string refers to a finite sequence of characters such as letters, numerals, syllables, and punctuation marks. Therefore, a string search uses a series of characters to search through a document or database. Such a string may consist of a word, part of a word, a phrase, a number, and so forth. When you search on Google, you use a string of characters. These are usually words, but can be any characters that you want to search for. This means you type the words you want to search for in the search box. Genealogists should search for the names of the people they're looking for. For example, I could enter the name of my great-grandfather, Henry Martin Tanner. When I hit enter, the Google search engine looks for any combination of the three words I have entered. It gives priority to all of the three words together. As a result, I get a very large number of results, in this case 2,530,000 results in 0.59 seconds. Obviously, obviously, I'm not going to look at all those 2 million plus results. In order to avoid having so many results, we can focus the search. A simple way to focus the search is to add quotation marks before and after the search term. In this case, the results of the search are improved. I get 2,500 results in 0 0.60 seconds. Despite the number of results, Google has put those websites that most closely correspond to my search terms at the top of the search. So I don't really have to look at all 2,500 results. I can also add additional terms as a filter to become more specific in my search. As a genealogist, I may wish to add terms such as genealogy, the location of an event, or the ancestor's occupation, or any other appropriate terms. Part of learning how to do Google searches involves guessing all the words about your ancestor that may have been used in some other website. In this case, I'm going to add the words Arizona Pioneer to the search. With the additional terms, I get 1,300 results in 0.73 seconds. I get different results than those with the previous searches. In this case, the terms that I find are specifically about my great-grandfather as an Arizona Pioneer. You can also vary the order of the search terms. In this case, I have put the terms Arizona Pioneer in the front of Henry Martin Tanner. The results appear very similar to those that I got earlier, but in this case, I got 1,330 results in 0.65 seconds. Searching is a learned skill. You improve your ability to do searches by searching over and over again. You gain skill 
by guessing what is, the, what is on the other websites and by doing a lot of searches. When we talk about doing string, string searches on computers, many people are familiar with Boolean operators. These operators, expressed as mathematical symbols, are named after George Boole, a 19th century mathematician and logician. The concepts developed by George Boole form the basis of mathematical set theory and database logic. Boolean operators can be used to connect and define the relationships between your search terms. If you're a technical person and you want to use Boolean operators, then you probably already know that Google recognizes all of the operators. If this doesn't mean anything to you, then you can simply ignore the whole subject because you do not need any of them to make effective searches. However, if you find you can find a list of them on by doing a Google search. Search for using search operators for a list of all of these extra symbols and characters that can be used. In addition to doing a Google search for your ancestors' names, I also recommend that you search Google Images for any images about your ancestor. In this case, Google will search for any website that has an image and also the terms you enter into the search box. So if I enter the same terms, Henry Martin Tanner, Arizona Pioneer, I will get a set of photos and images from websites with those terms. Google finds all of those images that are located on websites that have my great-grandfather's name. In this case, there's a picture of my great-grandfather's headstone and other photographs of my great-grandfather and his family. I next suggest searching in Google Books. The Google Books section focuses searches on a huge collection of books that have been digitized by Google. Google estimates that over 120 million books have been published, and Google has digitized over 30 million of those books. For comparison, the Library of Congress has about 37 million books. For searching in books, I can use exactly the same search terms I've used previously to find my ancestor's name in websites or images. By entering Henry Martin Tanner, Arizona Pioneer, I get results from books that contain those search terms. In this case, I got 180 results in 0.91 seconds. If you wish to buy the book or find a book in the library, you can use the link here to click on A Books or Amazon or find it, a library which will take you to WorldCat, that's W-O-R-L-D-C-A-T dot org, WorldCat dot org, the largest online catalog in the world. I'll talk more about WorldCat in my next series of videos on searching in catalogs. Well, this concludes this portion of the videos on searching. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, subscribe to the Brigham Young University Family History Library YouTube channel. Simply go to youtube.com and search for BYU Family History Library. Watch for the next video in the series on searching in catalogs.